Well, good evening, good evening, and good evening. Welcome to I Am Your Sister's Keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I am your host, Miss Terry Penny. And welcome again, y'all. It is a beautiful day outside. I hope you guys have enjoyed your day today. It was very pleasant today outside. Um, we, uh... It's warming up here in Milwaukee, y'all. It's, it's, it's not completely warm, but it is warming up. Um, y'all, uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't come on yesterday, y'all, because, uh, let me tell y'all about a gospel concert. When you go to a gospel concert that you screaming and shouting and dancing and hooping and hollering and you, 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 yeah, yeah, you, you got a connection and you surround it, you surround it with like-minded people doing the same thing, baby, the spirit is gone. And when I say, Toby Mac came and it was like three other groups that were there. Uh, they, uh, so many of the songs that I, I sing and worship and dance to at home, I didn't know they sung them. So just imagine me like a kid in a gospel candy store just I had so much fun the other night at the concert that when I got home and woke up yesterday, y'all, I was worth nothing. So, I am here today. <laughs> I am here today, and I just wanted to let y'all know that I wish that y'all could experience. Now, Toby Mac has been to Louisiana before. So it, it will be a, a, a good thing if he would have came back there again. If, if he would come back there again. Or anywhere. Because uh, as y'all know, Toby lost his son two years ago. Uh, his son committed suicide. His name was Alex. And, um, you know, it's just... We all lost a loved one, a family member, a husband, a wife, a mother, father, a child. And his love for God is so strong. Hey, big brother. Toby's love for God is so strong that it's what keeps him going. Because he knows that he's going to see his son again. So, that's, that's what I love about his music. Toby knows who his helper is. And in his music, it shows. He's letting you know, hey. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to do this on my own. If it wasn't for God, I would have fell apart a long time ago. So, like he said, his son was his wild child. So, like I said, we all lost someone that we love very dearly. But Toby is an example to us and letting us know that, hey, there's a God in heaven that if you give your heart to him, he will see you through your sorrows and your pain. So, remember that. 
Because I know I'm going to see my mom again. I know I'm going to see my sister again. I know I'm going to see my aunties and my aunt, especially my Aunt Gladys. My mom, my sister, and my Aunt Gladys, those were my heart right there. Because my Aunt Gladys was like my second mother. So, yeah. But, yeah, I I just wanted y'all to know, if Toby Mac ever comes in your city, make sure you get your tickets to that concert. Because he's going to have you out of your seat the whole entire concert. And let me let y'all know now up front, you're going to see about five or six acts before you see Toby. And get, be prepared because you may be in that arena for three to four hours. Because those four to five acts is going to take up two, maybe three hours. But see that last hour or hour and a half? Oh, that's all Toby, baby. All Toby Mac. So, yeah. Toby took us from the present all the way back to his beginning when he first started. So, it was a good concert. Yeah. So today, y'all, we're going to start chapter nine of the book of Hosea. Now, I told y'all from the beginning, Hosea has 14 chapters. We have five more chapters to go before we move to the next book. So. Chapter 9 has 17 verses. We're going to do verses 1 through 8 today because some of the reference verses for chapter 9 has 11 verses. Uh, some of the reference verses are whole chapters that you can go and read for yourself. I put everything at the beginning so if it's a whole chapter you can go back and read it for yourself you can take notes i have my tablet here because i was studying so i have notes so let us get started Let's open up with a prayer to the Father and invite him and his son, Jesus Christ, on down along with the Holy Spirit so they can join us in for the study session. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for another beautiful, beautiful day. Father, I ask that you and your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit come on down from the heavens, Father, and join us here on the earthly realm in my bedroom, and you can have a seat anywhere you want. Jesus, you the same thing. Anywhere you want to sit, you can sit. Holy Spirit, you can fill this room up and everywhere else in this apartment. Take over the cameras, take over the this Bible study. Whatever you feel you want to do, that's what you do. But I ask that you guys come down and join us today as we study your words, Father. Father, I ask that you open up our minds, open up our hearts, so that we may receive the message that you have for us today, Father. Father, I ask that you continue to bless my brothers and sisters with their daily needs. I ask that you continue to watch over them, watch over their families and their homes, Father. Protect them from the sin. 
and the unseen. Be with them, Father. Guide them. Teach them. Continue to love on them. Father, I ask that you hide me behind the cross. Don't let them see me, Father, but let them see you that is in me. Don't let them hear my voice, but let them hear your voice, Father. Father, let your will be done through me and let your light shine through me for all the world to see. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit fills me and give me the words to speak life, love, compassion over all your children that are watching and listening now, later on, next week, or any time the spirit moves for them to watch this video. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit touch each and every video and person that's on YouTube that may have, may have come across this channel that the Holy Spirit may connect with their spirit and that they may decide to drop in and listen to your words. Father, give us understanding of chapter 9 of the book of Hosea. Let us put ourselves in Hosea's place that we may see what he sees. And hear what he hears. Let us hear and see what the people see, Father. Father, we ask that you just continue to bless us with your presence. Continue to teach us your words. Give us understanding of what we are being taught so that we may meditate let your words penetrate our minds and our hearts that we may apply it to our lives and go out and teach others Father, I just want to thank you for what I saw earlier. And Father, I say, let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. And anything, Father, that glorifies and lifts up your name, I am willing to do and participate in. I thank you for all that you have done and all that you are going to do in the lives of my brothers and sisters in this land, Father, and in the year 2022. And I pray to you, Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen and amen. Okay. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. In the book of Hosea. Now, chapter 9 is talking about the captivity, the captivity 
to Egypt and Assyria. Now remember in the last chapter we talked about Ephraim went to seek help from Assyria. And God had compared Ephraim to a donkey. Because Ephraim went to seek help from a nation that was trying to destroy it. Instead of coming to him for help, they went to the enemy. So, let's begin. Verse 1 says, Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy, for Joy as other people, for you have gone a whoring from your God. You have loved a reward upon every cornfield. Hold up one second. Okay, yeah. It says... Eva Menahem, now king of the northern kingdom, had probably made a treaty with the Assyrians, which occasioned this treaty with the Assyrians, which, I'm sorry, let me read that again. Eva Menahem, now king of the northern kingdom, had probably made a treaty with the Assyrians, which occasioned this joy, the Lord admonishment, Rejoice now, rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people proclaimed him, being extremely agitated at this act. As other people proclaimed Israel attempting to be like the other nations, which the Lord pointed, tells them they are not. The phrase, for you have gone a whoring from your God, is what God calls his treaty. You have loved a reward upon every corn floor is a reference to them giving honor to their idol gods for the blessing of the harvest and for their treaty with Assyria. Loss of fellowship with God and loss of fruitfulness for God root results from the association of idols with God when the world, which is idolatry, is permitted to share the heart with Christ. Fellowship and fruit ceases. John 15, 1 through 11. Okay, now what I did was, I went and I was studying chapter 9, and I went to John 15, and I studied a little deeper, uh, John 15, 1 through 11. So that is what I have written in my study tablet. So, now what he was saying when he said, when the world, which is idolatry, is permitted to share the heart with Christ, fellowship and fruit ceases. The world that we live in, is full of idolatry. When we share our hearts 
when a believer of a child, in other words, a believer in Christ, when we begin to start letting the world influence us, when we start doing, start slowly incorporating the world into our lives. Say for instance, example, we have been living for Christ all our lives. We have been walking with him since since we could remember we don't do things of this world we never have we carried ourselves the way jesus carried himself when he was here on this earth we follow his commandments and his laws and we kept his covenant. We tied. But then we began to change a little. We never look at the outside world as far as dress wise. You know, we we always dress according accordingly, let's say. But it's just so happened a certain dress or a, a certain pantsuit caught our attention. And, we, and, and, you know, it's just, it was something about it that just, you know, you, you just, you, you know, and, and, and you got the money, but that money is your tithes to put in church Sunday. Now, you never missed your tithes. Not once. But that 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 outfit is just it's it's something in you that's just it's like it's so cute. It's so cute. I I want it, 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 I want that dress. I want that dress. I want that dress. But then it's that part of you that's saying, you can't spend that money. That's not yours to spend. You know that's not yours to spend. But your friends, they're telling you, girl, you know you want that dress. And then what make it so bad? They they this is how the enemy works in the world. They have your friends who know that you have never missed your tithes. He had them go get the shoes that goes perfect with the dress and show it to you.
And it makes it harder for you because now you see the whole fit. And you're like, oh. Oh. so now not only do you have the temptation of the dress in your eyes, you now have the temptation of the shoes to go with the dress. But yet, that part of you is still telling you that's not your money. You cannot spend his money. You know what you are thinking about doing is wrong. See, now there's a battle going on in your mind. Good and evil is at war in your head. See, the godly side is telling you, don't do it, Terry. Don't do it. You've been a faithful servant for so long. Don't fall now. Your rewards are coming. That's material things. Don't do it. Don't succumb to the evilness of this world. It's just material things. You're putting something before your God. While the world is saying, Forget that. You've been paying your tithes faithfully for years and years and years. You think he won't forgive you for this one little time? You don't think that he won't mind you doing something for yourself for just this one time? It's just one time. You know you want that dress because you know it'll look good on you. And you know that everyone will envy you. You better get it for somebody else does. You better get it for your size run out. Or the shoes go, or they go up on the price. That is what's sharing your heart. That is what it means. To have your heart divided. You can't have Christ in your heart and share it with the world too. It don't work like that. You got to all Christ, all world. What it says again. You have loved a reward upon every corn flower. I mean, corn floor. It's a reference to them giving honor to their idol gods for the blessing of the harvest and for their treaty with Assyria. Loss of fellowship with God and loss of fruitfulness for God Result from the association of idols with God. It says, when the world, which is idolatry, is permitted to share the heart with Christ, fellowship and fruit cease. You can't have it both ways. You can't serve God and serve the world. 
So, I can't go and buy them shoes in that dress and pay my tithes to my father because one is going to suffer for the other. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I would have paid for that dress and then wind up paying for the shoes that went with the dress, then guess what else was going to happen? Then I was going to go and get the accessories to go with the dress. That means the necklace, the earrings, the bracelets. Then I was going to get the hair done, the nails done. Come on, ladies. Y'all know how we do it. If we go get an outfit done, we got to have the shoes. If we get the shoes done, we got to have everything else. It's a package deal. It's the same with the men. If you get a new suit, you're going to have the new shoes, the fresh haircut. The fresh shade. Come on, y'all. That's in our nature. And after all that money is spent on just that for one occasion, we wind up with nothing to pay our tithes with or nothing to put in the offering plate. But if we take care of the Father first, if we give him his 10%, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. Because when you take care of him, he take care of you. The Ephraims, they didn't see it like that. The people of Israel didn't see it like that. They gave her, they, they, they gave praises to their idols for the harvest and the tree till to the Assyrians. But what they didn't know was they were now finna go into captivity to the Egyptians and the Assyrians. So, let's go to John chapter 15 verses 1 through 11. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 11. Okay, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now this, y'all, is talking about the true vine. The true vine. And we all know who the true vine is. That is Jesus Christ. And we are the branches. 
Okay. Verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Oh, okay. I'm in uh, John chapter 15. Verse 1 through 11 right now, big brother. You'll be leaving in a few minutes, won't you? Okay. Verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. The true Israel, as he is the true church, and the true man. More specifically, he alone is the source of life. Refers to God the Father not simply as the vine dresser, but also the owner, so to speak. It says, Jesus is the true Israel, man, church, and source of life. And God is the owner and the vine dresser. He is the Father of all creations. For us, it is through Jesus Christ that we can receive everlasting life and salvation because of what he did at the cross. The cross is our source of life and God is our creator. He is our honor. That is the breakdown of John chapter 15 verse 1. I'm going to say it again. This is what the Bible says. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. The commentary for verse 1 is the true Israel as he is the true church and the true man. More specifically, he alone is the source of life. Refers to God the Father not simply as the vine dresser, but also the owner, so to speak. The breakdown for us is Jesus is the true Israel man, church, and source of life, and God is the owner and vine dresser. It is though Jesus, it is through Jesus Christ, that we can receive everlasting life and salvation because of what he did at the cross. The cross is our source of life. And God is our creator. He owns us. Verse 2 says, Every branch, the believer, in me, to have salvation, we must be in Christ 
which refers to trusting in what he did at the cross that bears not fruit, the Holy Spirit alone can bring forth fruit within our lives, and he does such through the finished work of Christ, which demands the cross ever be the object of our faith, he takes away. If the believer refuses the cross, ultimately he will be taken out of the body of Christ. And every branch that bears fruit has some understanding of Christ and the cross. He purges it. Uses whatever means necessary to make the cross the total object of one's faith. But it may bring forth more fruit only when the cross becomes the total object of one's faith can the holy spirit perform his works of bringing fruit bringing forth proper fruit verse 2 every believer in christ must believe in him and what was done at the cross. They must have faith in the cross and the finished work that Christ did in order for the Holy Spirit to do what is what it is supposed to do. The cross must be the center of the believer's faith for this to happen. But if the cross is not the center of or object of the people's faith, then the Holy Spirit cannot do what it needs to do for them to bear fruit for God. Whatever branch bear fruit, God purges it so that it bears more fruit to glorify his name. Reference, Roman 8, 1 and 2 and 11. Verse 3. Now you are clean. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. The answer as always is found in the word of God. The story of the Bible is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3. The Bible is here to teach us about Christ and his crucifixion on the cross and salvation and eternal life. The Bible cleanses us of our sins because it teaches us how to pray to the Father and ask for forgiveness through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross where the finished work was done. Without the Bible. Without the Bible and what Christ did, we would have been destroyed a long time ago. Some of us, some of us would have never been born. Do y'all understand? The message that is in verse 3. If it wasn't for the Bible teaching us today how to pray to the Father and ask for forgiveness of our sins and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior.
if this was not, if this book was not written thousands of years ago, a lot of us would not have been here today. If, excuse me, if Jesus Christ had not done what he did thousands of years ago, mankind, the human race, would have been destroyed a long time ago. And a lot of people would not have been born. Do I mean, do y'all really understand the significance of this book? This book and what Christ did saved a lot of lives. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Sin was so bad upon this earth that God caused a flood and wiped everything. Everything. Man, woman, child, trees, birds, animals, everything. He killed everything on this earth except a family and some animals that was on a boat. He destroyed a whole planet in his fury. And what did he say? He made a promise when he made the rainbow that he would not destroy the earth again, but he will destroy man. And then what happened? Man didn't learn nothing from the flood. If anything, they went into super wicked mode and just went crazy. And who did it start with? Nimrod. It started in Babylon. And it just escalated. Do y'all know that if it wasn't for Jesus Christ standing up for us, sacrificing his life for us, do y'all know if it wasn't for this book and the words that was in this book, the world would have still been here. But the people would have been gone. And yet, we don't think about that. All we think about is ourselves. Four says, Abide in me and in you, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. 
Look to him exclusively and what he has done for us at the cross. If we properly abide in him, which we can only do by ever making the cross the object of our faith then he will abide in us without fail. That should give you some comfort right there. If you abide in this world and in man, man will fail you every time. Man is not going to stand by your side. Man is not going to be there to comfort you. Man is not going to be there to lift you up. Man is not going to be there and have your back. Man is not going to be there to do nothing but tear you down even further than what you already are. But Jesus will always be there for you. God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. He is there during your good times and your bad times. He will be there to wipe your tears. He will be there to lift you up. He will be there to take you out of the darkness. He will be there to calm your storms. But yet you choose to trust someone who's going to hurt you. Believers, one cannot sanctify oneself. It is impossible. Abiding in him refers to the fact that we understand that every solution we seek for whatever the need might be is found only in Christ and the cross. We must never separate Christ from the cross. I'm going to read that commentary again. Look to him exclusively and what he has done for us at the cross. If we proper, properly Abide in him, which we can only do by ever making the cross the object of our faith. Then he will abide in us without fail. Believers. One cannot sanctify oneself. It is impossible. Abiding in him refers to the fact that we understand that every solution we seek for whatever the need may be is found only in Christ and the cross. We must never separate Christ. Never separate Christ from the cross. Look to Christ for all your needs. Look to Christ for your strength and your courage because of what he did at the cross. He paid the price and atonement for our sins by sacrificing his life for ours. All right, big brother. He loved you enough to give his life for you. Man will let Man will and won't do that for you unless it will benefit him and harm you. Do y'all understand? Christ will give his all for you no matter what you've done 
what you're going through. He will give his last for you. Man could give a diddly squat about what you're going through. If he can't get nothing at your situation, you're on your own. If we make the cross the center of our faith, if we believe in what Christ did for us at the cross, the Christ then Christ will be there for us in our good and bad times. If we focus on the cross and serving the true living God, he will uh, he would always take care of us. If we seek his face and his kingdom, the impossible becomes possible. You just have to have faith Believe, trust, and let God do the rest. Amen. Man cannot save himself. Do you hear me? Man cannot save himself. Man cannot give himself life. Only God can do these things. And you can only do so much for others. You can lead them to Christ. But only Christ can save them. Only Christ can forgive them. I'm sorry. Only Christ can forgive them of their sins. Only Christ can give them salvation and eternal life. That saying goes for you too. Through Christ Jesus, all things are done, and only through him, no other way. Reference, 1 Corinthians, 1st chapter, 23rd verse, 2nd chapter, 2nd verse. Hmm. I hope y'all heard that. I hope y'all heard that. Verse 5. I am divine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Listen to that again. Let me, let me bring it up some. Listen, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do Nothing. Not the church. Not a particular pastor. Not even a particular doctrine. But Christ alone. Believers. Let us say it again. The believers must understand that everything we receive from God comes to us exclusively through Christ and the cross. That being the case, the cross must ever be the object of our faith. Then the Holy Spirit can develop fruit within our lives 
It can be done no other way. What he did for us at the cross, the believer should read this phrase over and over. One more time. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him the same brings forth much fruit for without me you can do Nothing. Nothing. Not the church. Not a particular preacher. Not even a particular doctrine. Christ alone. Believers. Let us say it again. The believer must understand that everything we receive from God comes to us exclusively through Christ and the cross. That being the case, the cross must ever be the object of our faith. Then the Holy Spirit can develop fruit within our lives. It can be done no other way. When we did, when he, what he did for us at the cross, the believers should read that phrase over and over. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Refuses to accept the cross, which means he is serving another Jesus. is removed from the source of life without proper faith in Christ and the cross the believer ultimately withers. The implication is striking. If proper faith in Christ and the cross is not maintained, the ultimate result is eternal hell. Let's read that again. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and it is withered. And man gathered them and cast them into the fire. They are burned. If you abide, I'm sorry, refuses to accept the cross, which means he is serving another Jesus. It's removed from the source of life. Without proper faith in Christ and the cross, the believer ultimately withers. The implication is striking. If proper faith in Christ and the cross is not maintained, the ultimate result is eternal hell. When you choose to place your faith in the cross and what it stands for, when you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and man and what he did at the cross when you put your trust in god's words 
that teaches you about the commandments and the covenant, the son, the cross, the prophecies to come, and you are obedient to him and have a relationship that is built on that obedience your reward is life eternally. Listen to that again. When you choose to place your faith in the cross and what it stands for, when you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and man and what he did at the cross when you put your trust in god's words that teaches you about the commandments the covenant the son the cross the prophecies to come and you are obedient to him and have a relationship that is built on that obedience your rewards is life eternally When you don't focus on the cross, but on this world. When you don't believe in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. When you don't study and keep God's commandments, covenants, or build a relationship with the Father. When you are disobedient and rebellious. When there is hatred in your heart for one another. When you put a person, place, or thing before God. You are an idol worshiper. Your reward is death. Let me read that one again. When you don't focus on the cross, but on this world, when you don't believe in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, when you don't study and keep God's commandments and covenants or build a relationship with the Father, when you are disobedient and rebellious, when there is hatred in your heart for one another, when you put a person, place, or thing before God, you are a idol worshiper. Your reward is death. Reference. Second Corinthians. 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you if you abide in me and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Y'all heard that, right? Our Father is saying, that if we have faith, and believe, and trust in Him, then whatever we need, all we got to do is ask for it, and it shall be given to us.
Y'all hear that, right? Whatever we need, all we got to do is just ask for it. <laughs> it says, oops, sorry. <laughs> It says, keep your faith anchored in Christ and the cross. In fact, the entirety of the word of God is the story of Christ and the cross. Proper faith in Christ and the cross desires only the will of God, which will guarantee now to be carried forth. Listen to that again. Keep your faith. Anchored in Christ and the cross. In fact, the entirety of the word of God is the story of Christ and the cross. Proper faith in Christ and the cross desires only the will of God, which will is guaranteed now to be carried forth. As faithful servants of Christ and children of God and true believers, we know that we can ask our Father for whatever our hearts desire. He is the type of Father that wants to see his children succeed in this life. He doesn't want us to suffer or in pain. Our, in our bodies or hearts. He loves it when we come to him for any and everything, y'all. He loves it when we talk to him about our day or even talk to him about his day. And we all know he don't have a care in the world. He don't worry about nothing. Y'all know that, right? He's probably up there now fishing. He ain't worried about nothing that's going on down here. He, he already know what's... Come on, y'all. But he loves it when we sit and just... Hey, Dad, how you doing? You know, and... Well, I thought I'd just check up on you, see how you're doing today, see how your day was going. Mine is going good. I, I thank you for waking me up this morning, and I thank you for just, you know, giving me the breath of life and opening my eyes so I can see this beautiful day that you created and everything, and, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. He likes to hear things like that. <laughs> Don't be like me, y'all. <laughs> Don't be like me, because, see, I, I talk to him about everything, you know. I be like, you know, I don't understand, you know, why these people, you know, how they like this, you know. I mean, why they do that? I I, I be all kinds, of, I be asking them all kinds of crazy questions, you know. All kind of crazy questions. Y'all, I mean, it, it be time, like, I sit there and I be like, Okay, Dad, you know, I, I I know this this I know this bug see me looking at it, right? And now dad, you know if it crawl on my bed, you know I'm gonna smash it, right? I mean, Dad, it's a bug and everything, and I, I know it's one of your creatures, but dad, if it comes near me, because you know I don't like bugs. You, you, I mean, come on, I I dad. Come on, just make it turn around and go on the other way and do the opposite thing and everything. Because you already know. You already know. 
And, you know, it, it's just things like that. And it, it, it's like, it's like sometimes with, with even, you know, with people, it, you know, I tell them, you know, why, why, why they start, why, why they getting on me? Why they getting on me? Why they, I ain't do nothing, you know? I don't understand why, why they, why, why they trying to heck me? You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they doing this. They doing this. And I'm trying to stay calm. I'm, you know, I'm doing the woosa thing. I'm doing the woosa. Why? Dude, I'm finna walk away. I'm gonna walk away. And, and you know, it's usually when I talk to him like that, cause you know he don't want you to come to him. him and you know you getting all proper and and all technological and stuff like that and talking all proper and you know you up there trying to fix your hair and and all that no he wants you to come as you are he he don't want you to be all preppy and everything you know what i'm saying if you sitting up there and you pigging out on pizza or a bowl of cereal or anything just talk to the man. He that's all he wants. That's all he wants. He just wants you to be natural. That's it. He just wants you to be natural. He already knows what's in your heart, but he just wanna hear it from your lips. And he just wants you to be honest with y'all. Y'all, stop lying to this man and pretending you're something that you're not. He already knows what you are and who you are and who you, he he knows these things. So I mean, just keep it one hundred with him. I mean, he already know you ain't spending your money right. He already know you ain't going to church. He already know you a drinker and a smoker and a party party person and all that. He he already know you got a gambling problem, baby. He already know that. Come on. All he wants you to do is just keep it real with him. I mean, the dude is cool. I mean, yeah, he don't mind. Come on. Long as you don't call him a foreign name, he all right. All right. And I mean, by foreign names, I mean his name is not Buddha or Muhammad or 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 Uka Allah Anna or what? Uh, no, I mean you can call him Jehovah. You can call him um, God. You can call him uh, Abba Father. You can call him um, uh, Son of Man, Jesus, Messiah, Savior. Uh, you can call him Yahweh, Yahshua, you can, you can, all that. But yeah, don't, don't call him no foreign name because he, he, no, he, no, no, no. And if you don't know the name, a name to call him, just say Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, 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 I call him, you know, big brother. And, you know, I got my dad and my father and. I call my big brother my heartbeat because, you know, he is my heartbeat because, you know, we came from the same dad and everything. But, uh, yeah, I, I sometimes I call my big brother because, see, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my big brother. Even though he's my savior, my salvation, my messiah, you know, uh, well, y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um. See, me and my big brother have a kind of relationship to where he um he has a very, very kind of a sense of humor that's just like, yeah. Yeah. He has a sense of humor. And if you have a a really close personal relationship with God and a really, really close personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you will find out that they do have a sense of humor. They are sometimes comedians. Uh, they 
will put you in situations and you'll be like, okay, so you guys got jokes. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and like, what are you expecting me to do with this situation? Okay. But he always works it out for your good. He works it out. Now, now you're going to get a lesson out of it. Don't get me wrong. You're going to get a lesson out of it, and you're going to come out stronger for it. But when you first get in it, you're going to be like, mm. Hmm. You know, I'm. I'm. A, I think I'm a. Uh, yeah, I think I'm a pass on this one. I think. I think I'm a pass. I'm a pass. And see, as soon as you think you you know you're gonna tell them, well, you know, I think I'm a pass on this one. They'll look at you like, mm, I don't think you will. I, I think this you're going to do this. You're going to do this. And then, you know, you'll be like, but see, the thing of it is, and then, you know, before you can say the thing of it is, you already, you doing it. Before you even know you're doing it, you're doing it. And then the next thing, you know, you and everything finished, you're going to be like, mm -hmm, y'all got jokes on. Huh? That's the kind of relationship I have with my dad and my big brother because they're comedians. They love doing jokes. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because okay. I still love them. I still love them. I still love them. I still would lay my life down for them. I still would. Uh, they're a bunch of great guys, you know. <laughs> they're still a bunch of great guys. I can't wait to see them. I ain't, you know, I ain't seen them in a long, long time. So, you know, it, it's, the family reunion is going to be good. It's going to be good. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and I'm going to keep reading because if I sit here and keep talking about them, yeah. So, verse 8. It says, Herein is my Father's glorified, that you hear, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. It says that believers totally and completely place their faith exclusively in Christ and the cross, meaning that Jesus did not die in vain, but that his death on the cross will be disciples. I'm sorry will result in much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Okay, hold on. I'm going to read that again. Herein is my Father glorified that you hear, I mean, bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. People faith, proper faith in Christ and the cross desires only the will of God, which will, which is guaranteed now to be carried forth. That be, I'm sorry, that believers totally and completely place their faith exclusively in Christ and the cross, meaning that Jesus did not die in vain, but that his death on the cross will result in much fruit. 
Verse 8 says, the more we have faith in the cross and the more we believe in Jesus Christ and the more we trust in God's word and the more courage and strength we have to go out and be and bear witness to our brothers and sisters in the world to the goodness to the goodness and the kindness of God, everlasting love, so that we are may uh, that we may also make more disciples to also be a witness to the love of God and the death of Christ and the cross. Listen to this again, y'all. What I'm reading, y'all, from the tablet is what was given to me from the scripture. This is what is. This is what we are to take. This is the messages that is coming from the, the verses. From the It says, verse 8, so that Jesus Christ's death will not be in vain. That we, we will go out and become disciples. It says, the more we have faith in the cross and the more we believe in Jesus Christ and the more we trust in God's words, the more courage and strength we have to go out and bear witness to our brothers and sisters in the world to the goodness and kindness of God's everlasting love so that we may also make what? more disciples to also be a witness to the love of God and the death of Christ on the cross. That's our job. That's what we were put on this earth for, to bear witness to the love of God and to bear witness to the death of Jesus Christ and the cross. That's our job. To go out and tell the world. To bring our brothers and sisters out of the darkness and into the light. That is what we are here for. We are not here to live for the world. We are not here to boast out or brag on ourselves. We are not here to, 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 to suppress other people we are not here to to um ooh. we are not here to belittle others we are not here to worship idols we're not here to be filled up with pride and vanity and lust. We are here to serve God. And to uplift. And serve our brothers and sisters. That's what we're here for. This is verse 8 out the Bible. Listen to it again. It says. Here in is my Father's glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples, that believers totally and completely place their faith exclusively in Christ and the cross. Meaning that Jesus did not did not, did not die in vain, but that his death on the cross will result in much fruit. The more we have faith in the cross 
And the more we believe in Jesus Christ, and the more we trust in God, word, in God's word, the more courage and strength we have to go in the world and bear witness to our brothers and sisters to the goodness and kindness of God's everlasting love so that they that they may also make more disciples and also be a witness to the love of God and to the death of Christ and the cross. It's a ripple of The ripple effect, you start off by telling someone your testimony and how good God is to you and how his love changed you. And then that, that, that light that he pushes through you touches their spirit. They get thirsty. They get hungry. They seek him. And then his light starts to illuminate through them. And then they start to tell their friends how he's starting to change them, how he's starting to show them the way, how he's starting to illuminate through them, how he's starting to strengthen them, how he's starting to change them from the inside out. And then his light touches their spirit. And then it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And then before you know it, it's a tidal wave. And all it takes is one person, one pebble in a big ocean to cause a big ripple effect. Are you that one pebble? in that small pond to cause that big ripple effect? Are you that big stone in that big lake to cause that big wave? Or are you a, a, a church Are you a church in the middle of a big river that, that, that's, that, that's going to cause a, a, a big wave to push out into the ocean? I'm sorry, I'm not a pebble. I'm not a pebble. I'm a rock about that big. You can see me coming. <laughs> you can see me coming. Because I'm going to make a ripple wherever I'm going. I love talking about my God. You can't tell me. Can't tell me nothing about my God. He's majestic. He's a king. He's love. He's strength. He's kindness. He is life itself. He's happiness. He's joy. He's peace. Well, y'all, that is the end of Bible study for tonight. We stopped on verse 9 
of the book of John. We will continue this tomorrow. And we will finish up. And y'all, we haven't gotten off of verse 1 of chapter 9 of Hosea. That's what I'm screaming. So, tomorrow we will continue with verses 1 through 8 of Hosea, but we're going to finish up uh, John chapter 15. We will start on verse 9, 10, and 11, and then we'll go back and we will do 2 through 8, and maybe even some, we can add some more then, because, hey, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's how it is. That's how it is. Because, see, once you start discussing the lesson and, and the verses, two hours go. So I want to thank y'all for joining me tonight, and I hope that this has been a blessing to someone. I hope that it has touched someone. I hope that you guys have gotten some out of it. Whether y'all watch the video with me to y'all was with me today or y'all watch it tonight or tomorrow, next month, it don't matter. I hope that the Holy Spirit jumps at you and just snatch you and just when you go back and you start watching it all the way from the beginning of of 2020. And Y'all, I, I, I appreciate all those who have subscribed to my YouTube channel. I Y'all, it, it is a blessing. It's a slow and tedious journey. But you know what? I know God is in control. And we're going to hit that 50. We're going to hit that 50. I have confidence in him. And I know through him all things are possible. So... We're going to pray out, and I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you all again so much. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer to say thank you for all that you have done and all that you are going to do. Father, I pray that this has been pleasing and acceptable to you in your sight. Father, I ask that you be with my brothers and sisters as they go and spend time with their families and their friends. Father, I want to thank you and your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for y'all coming down and joining us tonight as we study your words, Father. Father, I just want to thank you for being who you are. Thank you for using me to do this, Father. I pray that this Bible study has been a blessing to someone, that it has opened up the hearts and the mind of someone, that they seek you out, Father, that they want to know about you, want to learn about you, want to know who you are and, and why is it that you always have a smile on my face and in my heart. Father, I just want to say thank you and thank you for being a blessing in my life. Thank you for changing me and, and changing those around me, Father. Father, just watch over each and every one of us as we lay our heads down tonight to rest. Protect our families and our homes from the seen and the unseen. And again, thank you for waking us to see this beautiful day once again. Father, in your son Jesus Christ's name, I pray unto you on this day. Amen and amen. You guys have a blessed and wonderful day. Remember, God loves each and every one of you. He always have and he always will. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what the world's throw at you, whatever the enemy throws at you, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus Christ. And he will reach his hands out to you and pull you out of the pit that you put yourself into. And know that Miss Terry loves each and every one of you to the moon and back. I love you guys. Y'all stay safe, and I will see y'all tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And we will finish chapter 9, verses 1 through 8 and plus. And then we will finish up John 15, verses uh, 
1 through 11, and we will start with verse 9, 10, and 11 and finish that. So y'all be good. Y'all have a good night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Mwah.